Happy October from Myers Plants and Pottery. And with a new month comes a brand new episode of Pelham Living. This month, our travels take us out to Highway 11 to the Gray Oaks community, where we meet up with Francine Drexler of Remax First Choice. She is our on-stage business partner for October. Also on tap for this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we have a great interview with a Pelham local. Tammy Anderson explains to us why it's so important to enlist the help of a realtor when listing your home for sale. Also, we head up to the Hill, chat a little with Connie Nolan, and find out what's going on at Pelham High School. We drop in on the cheerleaders, and we have some great Halloween safety tips. It's a fun episode. You don't want to miss a minute. Hi everybody, I'm here with our on-stage business, Francine Drexler with Remax First Choice. Hi Francine. Hi Becky, how are you? I'm good, it's good to see you again. Same here. Tell us a little bit about your role in the community, real estate, how long you've been doing it, and about this nice little community. I have been working for Remax First Choice for 15 years, my wow. entire career. Okay, um, I very love unusual. Real estate. <laughs> yes it is. I love real estate and I um, enjoy getting people into that perfect home, that, that dream home that they've been looking yes. for. And uh, it's just a great, great neighborhood, a great community to live in. Pelham is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we are in the Gray Oaks community right now, which is a new community in Pelham. Okay. Who's the builder here? Jack Donovan with Donovan Builders is okay. the sole builder here. Mm -hmm. And it's a great community, extra large lots, mm -hmm. um, not a garden home community. Okay. Um, we have a pool and um, uh, we have great amenities. There's a lot of space, a lot of green here. Okay, that's awesome. And it's Pelham City it Schools? It is Pelham City Schools and our okay. new school system is I wonderful. I love that. Doesn't that have a nice ring to it? It does, it does. <laughs> have you seen that really change people's minds about living in this community? Yes, I, we have people that are actually drawn uh, for the school system and all the exciting things that are coming. That's awesome. Tell us about this model home that we're in right now. This is the Garrett plan at the, um, at the Gray Oaks community. It is one of our most popular plans. Okay. It has a wonderful huge kitchen with a breakfast bar uh, and also uh, eat-in space, as well as this uh, wonderful keeping room off the kitchen. Everybody loves to gather in the kitchen and that gives oh, yes. you that additional space because you also, it's all open to the great room. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a great entertaining house and then you have access to the covered porch which is um, I love it out there and that's a standard nice. feature here that's good. most of the um, the items that you will see when you visit the model home here mm -hmm. um, they are standard features okay. a lot comes with our homes okay and the open floor plan that's what everybody wants now. everybody wants that yeah, you can fit uh, a lot of people a lot of family mm -hmm. um, gatherings and everything just flow really easy on open nice. plans what do these homes start at uh, our price range is from 300 to the 400 range. Not bad. Um, now we have built larger homes, okay. uh, but we do that more of on, on a custom basis. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's change the topic just a little bit mm -hmm. um, because to get to their this home, the mm -hmm. home of their dreams, they probably need to sell the home they're living in. Yes, that's very important, yes. and uh, it's it's a uh, it's not that overwhelming, uh, or I guess it is overwhelming, it, it but it's like not. It is to me. Thinking, it's not as hard oh. as it sounds. It um, the things that you really want to do when you're ready to sell your house is, of course, you want the curb appeal, right? Because you've got to draw them for the curb. So yeah. you want to make sure your yard is nice and okay. neat. Um, and then your entryway. Okay. Uh, your entryway is very important because the agents are, are opening the lot box to get in your house and yes. there's the, it's the first the thing visitors, you see. Right. The visitors yep. are looking around at the condition of the of the entrance and, okay. and so that sets the mood for your mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get when you get in your home you want to declutter you want to clean and you want to update. Okay. Um, now that that's easy. Three yes. things. Three things, guys. Yes. And you really don't have. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The uh, sounds like just a lot of elbow grease. It is. Yeah. And it, it's probably stuff that you've always wanted to do. Probably. When you um, when you walk in a room, uh, you want to see some baseboards because mm -hmm. you don't want all of your furniture lined up along, along the outside. Why so do we do that <laughs> um, because we run out of space. That's we why do. we're moving. <laughs> But it, uh, it is a very, uh, uh, you know, you just need to move some stuff out. You do. Uh, Probably as, a good time for a yard sale. It is. And then updating, you would, uh, it, it's minor things. Your accessories mm -hmm. really change the mood. Right. You can take down the brass light fixture in your uh, eat-in space. <laughs> 
And then you can also, just updating those small things okay. and your, your a new accessories. Rug, things like right, that. Right, okay. it goes a long, long way. I really love this little community. I think it's going to do well. So Francine, do you have any other budding communities that you're representing right now? I do, in the Silver Lakes community. Okay. Uh, it is off of South Shades Crest. Okay. We have a new sector that has just wow. opened. That community is incredible. It has three stocked lakes, two wow. walking trails, two playgrounds. Uh, a big picnic pavilion with grills, and Goodness. it's just a wonderful, wonderful community. Easy, easy access uh, to I-459, okay. and uh, so it's it's a wonderful community. Mr. Donovan, with Jack Donovan with Donovan Builders, built in there as well. Okay, as well as John Brock with okay. uh, Classic American Homes. So there's two builders in there. Very uh, nice. The price range from. Three oh nine nine mm -hmm. uh, up to about three seventy five. Okay, and then we can also do custom homes. Sounds great. Now you also do personal resales and things like that. I do. Okay, I, I do down. a lot of new construction as well as the uh, resale homes. Be okay. happy to come and do a market analysis, which is free, no obligation. Perfect. Let let people understand what they need to do to okay. get their home ready and what they can expect to to make on their home. So many people are scared to talk to a realtor and they're scared, they don't know who to pick, they don't know where to pick. And I can tell you, I've known Francine for a very long time. So I know that she's gonna steer you in the right direction. How can we reach you? Um, my cell phone is the best way. Okay. And uh, at 205-965-2065. Uh, I'm with Remax First Choice in the Pelham area, so I'm very, very You're right there familiar. next to the um, Oak Mountain Amphitheater. Correct. Okay. I'm very familiar with all the areas. I'm a, um, I was born in Birmingham, so I've been okay. here forever. So. You know the area. Uh, yes. And you know, I have really found when you are buying or selling a home, it's very important if you have somebody who's lived in the community and they can give you so much insight. Yes, it, it is, because um, you, you just don't know the ins and outs. Mm -mm. And uh, I work with a lot of people that are moving into the area, mm -hmm. and so I'm able to show them uh, a wide range of, of properties. Good. That is awesome. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. So recently I had the opportunity to head up to Pelham High School and talk with Connie Nolan, who's an English teacher, and I think she's like the oldest living English teacher at Pelham High School right now, something crazy like that. Anyway, she's going to catch us up to date on all that's happening on the Hill. Yeah, we have a lot coming up in October. Kids have a fall break, and uh, you can look up the days online. School calendar is online. It's so pretty and all are green. Um, but if you look at October, you'll see when their dates are, but it's the 10th through the 14th. And shortly after that, juniors have the opportunity to take the PSAT. Um, and that is so important because junior year is the only year that our kids can qualify to be a National Merit Scholars. And that gives them a huge, huge advantage. Every college offers a different package, okay. but they're great packages. We have one who qualified this year. That is awesome, but I have to tell you it bothers me a little bit because we probably have five or six who could have qualified that didn't take the test because you have to get, you have to find out about it um, and you can't ignore Ms. Nolan because she'll just like keep saying it. So yeah, parents, ask your kids about the PSAT. It's $15, they pay in the counseling center, checks made out to Palm High School. We have senior night at the end of October and that's a huge deal uh, for all the seniors that are participating in football and cheerleading and the band, including all the auxiliaries, dance team, majorettes, color guard, that's huge, our athletic trainers, uh, everybody's involved with that and so we try to celebrate the seniors and each group has a little different way to do it, but it's definitely worth your effort to come up and see and celebrate your seniors one last time for their, li for their last time game uh, as the Pelham Panther. What's special about this year's fall break is there's going to be a new school on the hill and uh, it's Pelham Ridge and our teachers, I was with some of the elementary school teachers yesterday and they're so excited and the teachers are able to get in there I think Wednesday night after 8 and they can only work at certain times and they told me yesterday they don't care about working over fall break, they just want to be set up. They are so excited to be in the new school. They're telling me their, their fluorescent lights go up or down so they can have indirect lighting. I know they're so pumped about that. <laughs> and, and I'm pumped with them. And they say they have a, a really large cafeteria, large gathering spaces. The gym has bleachers so you can watch things. Uh, and they're so pumped about that. 
So I'm really excited for them. I know that Jamie Stevenson has some theater uh, activities going on. Uh, she and I actually won, um, and I was very much Robin to her Batman, but uh, she said we had to do the uh, Arts Initiative grant and we won $20,000 for the arts for Pelham High School. Yeah, it was awesome. And so uh, we went down and spent a week in Montgomery, went to Huntington College and got training and we learned so many wonderful things. We had a girl that came in, um, she's gonna be a sophomore at the uh, South Alabama School of Medicine and she showed us all about um, picmonics and sketchy medicine and they look at pictures and the pictures have visual cues in them that help them remember things to the tune of like 331% better four months later. Uh, so a picture of an old fashioned hamburger restaurant and it's got a cat in it, it's a water truck in the window, tells you it's water based and she just went through it. So it's fascinating. I mean it's arts education but I learned so much about just learning things and keeping on track. Mid-October, you'll see report cards coming home. Okay. And, uh, and we're things so parents come. need to be looking at, be aware of, asking their kids about? That They just need to talk to them about ACT prep. That's a huge thing. We're doing that this year. Um, I have a group that I only have for nine weeks. We have um, science and math teachers doing the science and math. So I'm very encouraged about that. Uh, we've been learning a lot and we're working hard on that ACT prep. You know, all of our kids now, their junior year, they take the ACT here at school. Okay. So that's huge. Yes. And I think it would be a great thing if parents would sign their juniors up. The juniors are the ones who take it in April. I think it'd be a great thing for the parents to sign their juniors up, and they need to do this in October, sign their juniors up to take it in December. That December test is important because the kids can get a TIR which is a test information report. They can sign up to get it, it's 20 additional dollars. But what happens is after they take the test, they get their answers back and their questions. So they can sit down, parents probably have to sit down with them because we don't like to think about the ACT after we take it. But they can sit down with them and look at what they missed. And, and they'll get all of that back in time to really see what they missed. That sounds very helpful. Oh, I think it would be very helpful. I mean, it was helpful to my children, and I think that's a great time to take it. The kids are prepped for tests anyway. They're getting ready for exams, and that way they do have time to go back and look over their answers. We want to get the strongest ACT score that we can. The ACT score is a driving factor for, um, Scholarship. for scholarships from the colleges. What do you think about when you hear October? I think about football, I think about fall, I think about the mountains, and I think about Halloween. And with Halloween comes trick-or-treating, and with trick-or-treating we need to be safe to have a successful evening out. I have some of Becky's trick-or-treat tips. These are going to help everybody have a safe and successful trick-or-treat outing. Don't send your youngsters out alone, or even in small groups. They just should not be put in positions to make decisions that they may or may not feel comfortable with. So even if you've got a 12-year-old next door that says, I'll take all the four-year-olds, just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Be a responsible parent. Take your own child. Don't go to houses that you don't know. And train your children. While you're out and about trick-or-treating, give them different tips that will help them not only that night, but in their future. Don't go to houses you don't know and never ever go inside the home of a stranger. Not a good thing. Take a flashlight or a glow stick. Have you seen those cool glow sticks? I love those. Wear something reflective, some way so that cars see there's a child there. Also, don't run through yards. You never know where there's a pothole or unstable limbs, rocks, gravel and a trip to the ER is not a good idea on Halloween night. Also, be careful crossing the street. All the cars out could just be your neighbors going to the grocery store. If they don't have small kids, they may have forgotten that it's even Halloween. So make sure you're careful crossing the street. Don't eat any treats until you go home and let mom and dad inspect it. I know they may eat a few pieces and that's okay, but make sure they check it all. Hopefully they'll eat the bad ones. Also, don't hurt the cats. Everybody has this thing about cats and Halloween. It's not okay. If you see someone that's hurting a cat, report them to the authorities, or better yet, call me. Hi, I'm Tammy Anderson with Remax First Choice. 
I'm here to talk about why you need to use a realtor to sell your home. With the help of Google and the do-it-yourself world we live in today, many homeowners think they should be able to sell their home themselves. It is understandable for homeowners to think they can eliminate the real estate commission because they do not understand the value of what they are paying for. As a homeowner, you can take the time to enter the basic information about your home so it is on a few websites, on the internet, but are you really reaching the right viewers? Are you reaching professional dreamers and lookers? Or are you reaching the ready, willing, and able qualified buyers who are working with real estate agents? When buyers are serious about finding and buying a home, they tend to choose an agent to represent them. A professional realtor is a member of our local realtor association who shares information about your house with other realtors who are representing buyers. Through the local association's multiple listing service and our company's website, we are able to network with other realtors and also advertise your home on hundreds of websites. An experienced realtor also knows how to write remarks which will compel prospective buyers to want to find out more about your home. A good agent will be able to recommend staging techniques to make your place look great. These little details, along with the correct touches of color, can make a big difference in the professional quality photographs that buyers are viewing when narrowing down their choices. A great realtor uses a professional photographer to take high resolution photos that enhance the viewer's experience, allowing them to see themselves in the home. In addition to marketing your home, realtors will provide you information about current market conditions and will keep you informed with weekly updates on your competition in your neighborhood. Once a buyer finds your home on the internet, buyers will need to tour the inside of your home before they will make an offer. There is a lot of time involved with answering those phone calls, keeping up with who called, answering their questions, and coordinating appointments for the prospective buyers. This can be time consuming and awkward if you are not sure what to say or how to say it. In addition to the uneasiness of opening your door to strangers, some homeowners make the mistake of talking too much and telling the buyers all about their little Susie's adventures or other things that end up turning off the buyer's ability to look at your house. By having your home listed with a realtor, other buyer's agents can access your home with our super lockbox system that records when and who entered your home. Once a buyer is interested in your house, Having a third party to assist with negotiating the terms of the sale can be priceless. Not only does a realtor help complete the paperwork, they determine which legal documents are required. Real estate agents know how to handle the nerve-wracking parts of the process and know how to handle the bumps that you'll incur along the road to closing. There is a reason why 90% of the sellers use a listing agent to sell their home. Selling a home takes marketing skills, knowledge of the area, negotiating skills, contract knowledge, and communication skills to close on time. Before trying to sell your home yourself, think about the time and effort that is required. Hopefully, you now understand the value of hiring an experienced real estate professional, such as myself. I have had a real estate license for 20 years and know the ins and outs of selling real estate. Would like to put my skills to work for you. Not ready to sell, but curious about your home's value? Or know of a neighbor or friend who would appreciate my level of services? Visit my website at TammyAnderson.net. Click on the button that says, What's my home worth? I'll be glad to provide a current market analysis so when you are ready to sell your home, I will be ready to take your call. Call me at 205-965-8545 and we can get started today. We're at Pelham High School today meeting with Jean Coker, who is the head coach of the Pelham High School Cheerleaders. Hi, Jean. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. So, what made you take on a job like this? Well, if you really want to know the truth... We um, want the truth. We've okay. got to have the truth. <laughs> when, like, when the old coach decided to leave, mm -hmm. um, they did not have anybody else to fill her position. Nobody stepped forward to do it, and I felt like we really, of course, needed a cheerleading sure. program here at Pelham. So I took over, uh, went to them and said I would do it. And so I became the head cheerleading coach here at Pelham High School. Awesome. So how do you like it? Pros and cons? 
The first year was really, really rough. Okay. I did not do cheerleading in high school. I did dance team. So mm -hmm. I knew dance, but I didn't know cheer. Okay. So, um, you know, learning the terminology. Yes. I had to go and get a, and I had to actually go get my coach's license mm -hmm. to be able to coach. Oh, wow. So, I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, I did. I went uh, through a summer training okay. and got my actual coach's license. Wow. So it's been, it's been very rewarding. I love working with the girls. Good. This year, a whole lot better. I've got a very, very talented varsity squad Good. and a very talented JV squad. Mm -hmm. So this year's been a lot easier than um, probably, my first year was really rough. Right, right. I had to make a believer out of the girls. Yes and that I was here to stay, I wasn't yeah. leaving, I was gonna do what needed to be done to make sure this program flourished as it needed to. Right. What's the camaraderie of this squad this year? This year it's really, really good. good. It's really good. My varsity squad is very, very talented. Mm -hmm. They're hard workers, they're, um, they're able to do, all of their abilities are very similar, mm -hmm. so they work real well together. That's awesome. Um, JB is getting there, mm -hmm. but of course they're a work in progress. Right. But a Look lot younger. of them have a lot of good talent as well. Right. And um, so they're working really hard. A lot of them actually have got as much talent as some of my varsity girls. So that's awesome. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for letting us invade your practice absolutely. today. Absolutely. And can we talk with maybe a couple of the heads? Sure, absolutely. Okay. So we're here with the varsity cheerleaders from Pelham High School. We've kind of interrupted one of their practices, and I'm here with Madison and Emily, the captain and co-captain for this year's squad. How are you, ladies? Good. Okay. How do you like cheering for Pelham High School? Um, I wouldn't want to cheer for any other school. That's awesome. Good school yeah. spirit. What about you, Emily? Uh, I love it here. Good. So, Good. I love the team. Do you prefer basketball or football? Oh. Huh. Or both, maybe. You both. Can say both. I oh, like that answer. <laughs> what about I would say both, yeah. for okay. sure. All right. So, other girls, I know y'all work with like the youth groups and things like that in cheerleading. What do you tell them if this is what they want to do, they want to cheer in high school, what do you tell them as advice to be able to do this? Um, to stay with it and don't give up, like keep striving to be better. Yeah, confidence. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. What about you? Um, never stop cheering. If it's your passion, it's your passion. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how long have you cheered here at Pelham High School? Um, at Pelham High School? Mm -hmm. Since my freshman year, so four years. So you're, you're a senior this year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what about you? Since sophomore year. Okay, so. awesome. If you weren't cheering, what would you be doing? Um, it's like deer in headlights. <laughs> oh no! That's a good question. I don't really know. Oh boy, so you love cheering yes, that much? Yes. That's awesome. And you? Well, I do indoor track, so okay. I'll probably do track if okay. I didn't do cheer. Both things are keeping you active, mm -hmm. so that's wonderful. What's your favorite thing about cheering at Palm High School? My favorite thing would be that we get to have a big community and we're always leading other people and getting to know everyone that's here. And our group of girls is very diverse in everything that we do and so we just really like having to be with them and getting to know more about each other. Good. That's awesome. Um, what about you, Anna? Um, I like being a part of a big family and feeling like if someone's doing something together, we're all doing something together. We're constantly around each other. We're just big family. Yeah, it's like an extension of your family when you're involved in something like this. Yeah. So do you prefer cheering for basketball or football? I like football just because I actually understand what's going on. <laughs> so I get to learn everything that they're doing and I actually know what they're doing. Awesome. And what about you? I know what you're yeah, going to say. I like football. I've been around it my whole life. Yes. I understand what's going on. It's just an amazing game. So. Yeah. And if you yeah. said basketball, you might not have a bed to sleep yeah, tonight. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so if other girls were out there thinking about cheering for Pelham High School, what would be one piece of advice that you could give them? Just be confident and do it. Like the main thing that we tell our girls to do is just be confident in who you are and show who like you are meant to be and go out there and show it all. That's awesome. What about you, Anna? Same thing, yeah. Be confident, you know, have passion for it, want to be able to do it and just have fun with it. Thank you, girls. How about give us a little chant to go off on here? The new P-E-L-H-M. Yeah. Okay. P-E-L-H-M, P-E-L-H-M, go him, go. Woo! Thank you, girls. I am with Sharon Wilkins now, and we are chatting a little bit just to tell you her story since October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we just want to remind everybody to get those mammograms, uh, remind the people that are close to you that you love to go get their mammograms, and we're going to hear a little bit about why you should do that, why that's so important. Welcome, Sharon. Hey, thank you. Um, 
Yes, I was one of those that had skipped several years of having a mammogram and look what happened. Um, I found a mass and had my first mammogram in December the 16th and then they called last, me this last year. This last year. Okay. And they called me December the 21st and wanted to do a repeat mammogram. Mm -hmm. and, um, and did that make you think something's not right? Yeah. yeah. And, I t and the lady had asked me the first time, she said, have you found anything suspicious? So I knew. Right, she, something's going on. Yes. And so I went the 22nd to Brookwood and um, I had like eight different mammograms and then they sent me over to the doctor to have the biopsies done. And um, I had what I thought was a stomach virus, but in the long run, it was acute pancreatitis. And so <laughs> I ended up going to the hospital that night and found out Christmas Eve I had breast cancer. Wow. The doctor thought, the doctor that have done the biopsies told me that he was 99% sure, but we were not gonna tell the kids, we were gonna let them have a good Christmas mm -hmm. and then tell them after Christmas. Right. And so Christmas Eve, Anna was in the room with me and the doctor said, and we're not gonna worry about your breast cancer until we get you over this acute pancreatitis because oh. we've got to heal this first. So oh boy. that's how Spoiler. it all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's how it all started. And so, what type of procedures have you had to have? What what type of breast cancer was it? How are you doing? It Remission, was, that sort of um, thing? Triple negative. I was stage two. Um, I stayed in the hospital with a pancreatitis from the 22nd to January the 4th of this year. Oh boy. Um, just a lot went on mm -hmm. during all of that time with blood transfusions and plasmapheresis and mm -hmm. you name it. And I had to have a port placed mm -hmm. and I had to go every week to the oncologist to have my blood drawn and make sure you know it went low and everything and then the next week I would have a chemo treatment and so that's the worst thing ever and um, I mean you just don't realize when people are going through chemo yeah. what I, yeah. I have a better a better look on life now because of that but everybody says that you appreciate the smaller things mm -hmm, the smaller things in life um, has 16 treatments and then I had to have a double mastectomy. And I just had surgery this past Tuesday, the first phase of reconstruction, okay. and I have two more surgeries to go. And to me, I mean, it's just been everything. My family has been so supportive. It's, my husband works from home, so he was That's able good. to take me for all the chemo treatments and continue awesome. working. Um, you know, my kids both live away from me, one in Mobile and one at the time in Tuscaloosa, so that was hard on them. Mm -hmm. um, and I worried about them, of course, but one of the things that has been the hardest for me is I had to quit my job. And I absolutely yeah. loved my job. Yes. <laughs> and everybody there loved you. And so. <laughs> Tell us what you did. <laughs> I was manager of a cafeteria at Helena Middle, and I have cried many tears over that. But. I will never be able to go back in that capacity mm -hmm. again. So, of course, I've lost all of my hair. It's finally started coming back in. Um, just the medicine. But medicines. you look great for what all you've been through. I mean, <laughs> well, to come you. through in a year's time, less than a year's Le time. Less than a year. That's December crazy. 22nd will be a year. But your whole focus turns from whatever's going on in life to your health. Mm -hmm. So, just talk you, to us a um, minute about why it's so important to get those mammograms. Um, you may think you're perfectly healthy, but like I did, and my girls at work had noticed that I was not feeling well and they were begging me to go get checked out. Um, but there can be the, the smallest thing that you don't know mm -hmm. is there, is there, and it can keep growing. And you know, if I had kept every year, I may not have ever had to go through this, mm -hmm. you know. So, might have found it sooner. Yeah, might okay. have found it sooner. Okay. It's just very important. Yes, it very, is. very important. Thank so. you for sharing that with us. Is there any um, group online or somewhere that we can point people to if they have a question about mammograms or anything um, like that? There are several groups on Facebook. Okay. Um, Brookwood is, is where I've gone through. Okay. Um, they That's have a whole okay. website on there oh, about good. mammograms and okay. stuff. And, and I want to say in October, they like cut the price if you don't have health insurance or your there health you go, insurance ladies. is not. So 
you know, they do cut the price and they yes. work with you for everything. And I've heard now that they offer like, is it a 3D imaging or, yes. or something like that? Is that better? Oh or, yes. Okay. <laughs> I had the regular, the three, the four, I mean, everything. Okay. It was amazing how much bigger you could see it was. Wow. On each one. Goodness gracious. All right, guys. Mine was bigger than a golf ball. And I hear so many people talk about it's the size of a pea or something. So that's really, that's Mom, really large. the size of a golf ball. Wow. Well, I'm glad you're here with us. So glad to see <laughs> you. So glad that you're here. Glad and to still be here. Yes, 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 yes. So everybody go get your mammogram. Your mama said too. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Pelham Living. Don't forget to like the Facebook page, like the video, and share it with your friends so we can make sure everyone sees all the wonderful things going on in our community. Next month, we've got lots of great things in store. If you want to send us a message about perhaps a business or somebody you think might be a fit, use the message button on Facebook. Until next time, happy fall.